now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Toy boat, toy boat. I decided to match the weather here, and <laughs> my background is my daytime background, because okay. down there in sunny Florida, and she sits outside, rocking back and forth on that little chair of hers to <laughs> just rub it into us that the weather is just so sunny and nice down here, and there are birds chirping in the background and everything. So. Right, but we if it's any consolation, we, the way we're affected by hurricanes, we're not, we have seen hurricane damage in the last decade. So yeah. not me personally, but others. And yet we get about every day, like today, it will rain just ferociously for about an hour. Yeah. And then maybe, maybe rain for a little more. So see, the panhandle is kind of like Florida light. Now the worst, well, the worst though was uh, when I was in Hawaii. Yeah. It would do that, you know, where it just rains suddenly and then it stops. Yeah. That's tropical. Yeah. But how it rained was strange because one day I'm standing there and all of a sudden I'm this downpour comes down and I'm getting drenched and I look across the street and it's dry and not raining. Oh, yeah, I believe it. It's that fluky. Yeah. 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 But uh, it's pleasant though when you kind of know, okay, this isn't going to last. You know, it's uh, when we, we've been here long enough to know the patterns. Going, yeah, it's going to be like this. Make sure your iPad's off the deck, and yeah. then you know, and then wait it out. By the way, let me just uh, uh, tell people who don't know who you are. This is Lori Thompson, and every time I do an interview with Lori, uh, uh, we get lots of people watching. So I'm uh, yeah. delighted about that. Maybe yeah. some people. I have had people. Did I tell you about the woman I met on a cruise? that had listened to us and gone to one of the live shows. And then uh, another guy, when I was in Bloomington, getting my life together, Bloomington, Illinois, mm -hmm. one of the regular listeners. By the way, is that a good place to get your life together? It is, because there's okay. not much else to do. Okay, it's very good. In other words, it's boring. It, yes, yeah. State Farm headquarters. Yeah. But I had taken a radio job just to keep my mind off my habits. Mm -hmm. And it was effective. And so I was doing a car remote. Remember ro remotes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the car dealers, play, they paid off like slot work. And uh, so I was doing a series, an all weekend series. And the assistant manager and I eventually became like, you know, Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell. We, we could hand off that remote and still pimp the car deals. Yeah. And one of our, yeah. one of you and I's regular listeners that had been to the show mm -hmm. uh, came by to see me. And I remember I was having some kind of dental problem. Yeah. And so, which of course I pointed out so I would not be vulnerable to retellings of how my life had gone to hell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, he took it in stride and we had a real nice time reminiscing for a bit. How had your life gone to hell? How, uh, how bad was it? I finally had to address my alcohol problem. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, in big time. Uh, please, you know, please do. I just had a friend die from that. Oh yeah. Well, I yeah. ironically, after I kind of got my life together, after I had gotten my life together, mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine, my dearest friend since childhood, said, uh, succumbed, and I knew she was because I knew the earmarks. So I would go up to St. Louis unannounced. So she was, like she a, was an alcoholic as well. She was. Yeah, she was admitted. And what and did she, she, what she die of? Cirrhosis, right? She didn't die. She went to rehab in Texas, and then and then uh, a car hit her. <laughs> she fell out of a dirgeable. No, she, um, but she's doing well now, and I'm so knock on. Oh, okay, damage. okay. So this is somebody who survived it. Yes. Okay. All right. And you're lucky because if you try to quit on your own, which I did twice, uh, you have you can have seizures. One of which landed me in the hospital for a week. Really? It was the seizure of try going without alcohol. The irony there. Well, I mean that yeah. happens. That happens. Yeah. Oh. You know. It's uh, very and, and, and doctors who will, if you're an alcoholic, uh, you know, 
uh, deal with this are, will probably say to you that it is not a good idea to just, you know, stop no, like that. It's not. It's yeah. not. I learned. And, uh, or, and it's, if, it's, it, or if you do it, you do it under a doctor's, you know, control. Supervision. Yeah. yeah. Supervision. And, how bad, uh, how but, bad was your drinking? Oh, every day. It was, and then there were like times when I'd go, is this Monday? And it'd be like Thursday. So I essentially, it got real bad. Really, really bad. bad. Okay. Yeah, I quit. The, ironically, cocaine is the easiest thing to quit when your dealer gets busted. You know, you're like, well, oh, I, 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 I told people I actually quit cocaine by moving to Florida. And people said, huh? Florida? Yeah, I, how, yeah. how, how, how is that? You know? Yeah. And then I go, I just didn't know any dealers down there. I said, I'm sure if I looked or just yelled out the window, I would find them in Miami. Right. But, you know, but I really, you know, the uh, speed dial on your phone was all 2,000 yeah. miles away. Yeah. So, and but, I thought I was going to go crazy. I thought I was going to go nuts and I was going to be itchy and everything. Like, no, I just, no, that was it. it yeah. yeah. It's cocaine is relatively few side effects of quitting. You know, a couple of days, a couple. Uh, what I, the worst thing was, I was tired all the time. Yeah, exactly. You know? And then uh, yeah. Yeah, it was okay. I sur I survived it. You know. Uh, well, a good friend of mine, his name for cocaine was Energy. <laughs> Let's do some energy. <laughs> Let's do and some that, energy. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it seems that way for a while. Actually, well, for me, it was calming for about twenty minutes. Well, you know, I, I was doing cocaine when we were doing the radio shows while we were doing the radio shows. We, we, I suspected you were, but I never want to, you know, call you. I'd how how, you how did you suspect it? You would disappear, and do you remember the cone of silence at the old station? Yeah. So when we were on Ninth Market Street. Yes, or is this now known Twitter? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know. I, I, every, I go by the old haunts when I go back to San yeah, Francisco. But anyway, so, so you, I, I would disappear. Into the cone of silence, there were there was a stripper and her cousin that used to come in, and uh, they would sometimes disappear with you. I, I think a they were stripper and her. I don't. I don't. Lusty remember. lady, a lusty lady woman and yeah, her cousin. The lusty they lady. The lusty lady was a uh, a place where you went and uh, you stuck in a quarter, and the window went up, and you could see a naked woman on the other yeah. side of the glass. What, there, there was nothing going on particularly in there, you know. No, so not with you and the strippers, no. Not no, that no, I knew. No, no, I'm, I I'm saying there was that. nothing going on in the lusty lady. No, nobody was uh, was uh, giving sexual favors. No, there wasn't any uh, two people, two different people touching. It yeah. was one guy kind of touching himself. Unless you broke the touching. glass and then went <laughs> 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 and that's a burglary and it's How did I can't even remember who those people were, but I knew that I knew somebody who worked at the Lusty Lady, yes. But anyway. Yes, it was a, a blonde girl who worked at the Lusty Lady and then her red headed shoulder length cousin. Oh okay. yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's that was kind of the it was a short time as I remember yeah. that you would do that. But anyway, I would well where I would usually go was into the bathroom and I had this yeah. little bullet thing. Oh, with the, I never with, learned it. Yeah, and then you just those. turn the thing on. And you can actually palm it. I could actually do it in public or in a theater or whatever. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Are you yeah. crafty? Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I never... Yeah, go ahead. I never, learned to, I never learned to use those. I dumped too much cocaine. We're probably telling people more than they ever knew about us. You know, yeah. I know I got to remember that. Restraint. Yeah. But also. anyway, so I, uh, 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 what I would do those, I would buy, buy the cocaine and then I would cut it. Uh -huh. um, uh, with uh, something. I can't remember what it was. Was it Manitol? Manitol, or, uh, something like that, yeah. And then I'd make it last twice or three times as long. I did So I never really got a strong I, upping my dose, upping my dose, upping my dose habit, you know. Uh -huh. And I yeah. would also spread it out so I knew how much I was buying, that I wasn't overbuying it. I think I was spending maybe $5,000 a year on Coke. But I was making four hundred thousand, so you know it's like yeah. it's like um, uh, 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 Robin Williams used to say, you know, uh, the cocaine abuse is God's way of telling you you're making too much money. Yeah, 
You were very generous to you. Like I remember at that great New Year's Eve party that you always threw, because yeah. you would do shows at the Palace of Fine Arts. Now we don't and go back to all, my place. That was one of the happiest memories. We were all like in this blessed troop going to your house, going from the palace to your house in the marina, and it was so fun. I thought I have the best life. And then I bought a generous <laughs> amount of coke for that party. Oh yeah. And then put it out, and it was all gone by the end of the party. Oh yeah, lots of Hoovers among us. Yeah, yeah. I didn't I didn't really ever feel I always felt self conscious doing someone else's, so I always brought my own. <laughs> and you know, to supplement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, you and, and you don't use other people's spoons, especially during COVID. Uh oh. yeah. <laughs> Your rules of cocaine etiquette. Yeah, but one day, I, I mean, I went to Texas, I went to use Florida, and I came back and I wasn't doing it anymore. And I do it like uh -huh. once a year on New Year's when we do uh -huh. those New Year's shows. I do it once a year on New Year's. And I kept thinking, you know, that, hey, I did all that coke back then, but I stopped. All right. Yeah. So I stopped. And uh, if I just did some now to be like when I first did it, right? No, yeah. it's not like the first time you did it. It's like the okay. last time you did it. Which was probably a drag and the reason you quit. Yes, yeah. right, exactly. So Plus, after, I mean, after that, I just never did it anymore, you know. So. Yeah, it just after a while, it stops giving you what you thought it was giving you. Yeah. Which yeah. is nothing yeah. in the first place. Yeah. And. Uh, for me, it brought me calm, like I say, but only for about 20 minutes, and then you had to hit it again. Yeah, and so, so uh, good, no old, good old days in San Francisco. Yeah, Yeah. don't, just say no. <laughs> well, it, I started on Coke over at KMEL. And, uh, oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, because my, uh, my general manager, I can't remember his name right now, uh, when I, the show was over, I'd go in, and he said, great show, Alex, close the door. <laughs> And then he put out a couple of lines of cocaine, and I got used to it at that point, you know. Sure, you get habituated. That's yeah. what people forget about it. But I don't, I don't know that I really had a horrible habit. I thought I maybe did, but I quit so easily that how bad could it have been? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and, well, see, if you're in a relationship where both people do, mm -hmm. it's hard to quit because you're, cause you're oh, afraid. Oh, I remember... I remember, uh, what was it? Which one? It, it was Susan, my wife Susan. She was well, in New I met. York. She was lovely. She's, I mean, you've got a great, oh, yeah. great wife. Yeah, well, she, well, anyway, Susan was in New York and she came back. Uh, uh, I may still have been at the quake at that point. I think, I don't uh -huh. know when Susan and I broke up exactly. But anyway, uh, I said to her, uh, I've quit smoking because while she was gone, I stopped smoking and I was successful at it. It was I was I was staying off of it, and not smoking. And the first reaction she had was, "Well, I hope you don't expect me to quit." Oh, that's, so you—that's what you're saying about somebody else who's doing it with you. It's a little hard to quit, you know. Right, because you'll find it like I tried to quit drinking when I was in a relationship with someone who did, and things were going fine. He wasn't going to drink at the house. But then I'm cleaning the sink and I open up the kitchen, you know, mm -hmm. the, the below the sinks cabinets, you don't see a lot. And there was a huge, one of those multi-liters of vodka. Mm -hmm. so I don't think our policy is sticking. Yeah. 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 It's but, hard. But, but do you think, it, 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 of all the things that you've done, and God knows I know you, you've done a lot of them. <laughs> and, and so have I. I mean, the only thing I haven't done is heroin. And you're, I've never even seen heroin. And I was, you know, I love a little demi mond existence. Although I've been told of all the drugs we're talking about right now, cocaine is kind of the least dangerous if you get stuff that hasn't been pumped up with the fen uh, fentanyl and things like that. That uh, mm -hmm. of all of them, it's, it's terrible. I mean, it is very addictive. And the fact yes. that it's illegal makes it even worse because people become these, oh, I'm sick, I've got to get some, I need some, you know. Uh, and, yeah. and and they become pathetic people. So, I mean, all of that said to me, I don't want to become that kind of pathetic person. I can de I, I'll do the other drugs, all right? Yeah, Now, the one right. drug I didn't, other drug I didn't do, alcohol. 
You, you never drank. When I never I drank, you. and it wasn't because, you know, I was an alcoholic at one time and I went to the meetings. It's like our old friend Bob Rubin used to say, yeah, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd be an alcoholic, but I can't remember when the meetings are. Right. You know, um, but, Rube played San Francisco not long ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lisa Carr was going to see him. Yeah, yeah, but anyway, so the point is that that you know that I'm uh, uh, I never was into alcohol at all. I just there was something about it I didn't like the taste, you know. And uh, uh -huh. my, fa my father drank. He was a musician, and of course, yeah. you know, a musician. Those are the territory. You, you build up quite a tolerance because some guy out there dancing with some woman who he's trying to impress goes buy the band a drink. You know? Right, and so all yeah. of a sudden there'd be a drink there in front of his music stand, and yeah. uh, he 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 knew how to drink. And one day, this is my father, much like me. One day he just said, "That's it for me and alcohol. It's starting to affect me." Man, and he, wise man. And he he just quit. He just stopped. Yeah. You know, there yeah. was nothing uh, left there. So that's a strong mind. A great it's mind. So anyway, he was he was in a pretty uh, good shape that way, uh, but anyway, so I never I never liked alcohol. I just never liked the taste of it. I didn't like the kind of high it was. So I never did booze at all. Wine, I no wine, no beer, none of that. You know. Well, see, you got to keep sampling till yeah. you find out. What and yet, I, I I had a cocaine thing. You know, but once mm -hmm. I decided to quit cocaine, boom, I was through with it. Uh, yeah, you know, that's and, that's a good quality. Yeah, and I always yeah. said thank God for pot because I never liked booze, so at least I had something I could get high on. <laughs> Some then, vice, I, I mean, what vices are available? Then I got tired of pot. The only thing I use pot for is if I can't go to sleep at night, I'll take a couple of uh, tokes off of a vape that has some huh. indica in it, and it puts me right to sleep. Okay. That's good. Yeah, for sleeping. See, I love for a year. I loved pot when I was uh, the summer before college mm -hmm. and while in college, but then I got into radio and like went into work high once and yeah. it was horrible. I didn't, it's not that I messed up so much, but it totally zapped my confidence and, you know, in my uh, smooth flow. It would, I would have too many thoughts on the way from my body doing the next thing I knew was in order. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, never again. And then I just, and that's when I started to, you know, yeah. en enjoy the occasional like fish. And then it was usually just a couple of glasses of wine in the evening. And then it got to the point where it was whatever was available. In the wow. And then, uh, then I went back to just wine because uh, I've noticed that you can be around, if you drink wine, you can mm -hmm. be around people. And if you're conscientious about brushing your teeth it just smells like an apple oh really? you can hit the macintosh yeah <laughs> but uh so but then after a while you just become pathetic mm -hmm. and i thought i don't mind dying but i'm not going to die of pathetic alcohol mm -hmm. not gonna happen. yeah yeah hold on a second i just got to do something here because i i i i'm i was out of i'm out of sync uh Ooh. so let me put myself in sync and then we're that fine. drives me nuts and on shows you're streaming yeah, something. And, yeah, and now I can go back and am I out of sync? Oh, I don't know. Eh, <laughs> hell with it. I'm still. Oh, I, you know, since traveling mm -hmm. with you, I think you view as much a movie director as I do a radio guy because you we had so much fun on those trips because yeah. I was your foil, you know, and uh, you would make these mm -hmm. great, great videos that were um, broadcast for, mm -hmm. for sure. And yeah. this was back in the 90s. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. that was fun. There we go. Yeah. Now, now I got myself in sync here. Your sync. That's what we're all striving for. Well, what happened is this. Uh, I'm not I'm not going to get the technology. Okay. But, all righty then. But, but um, we were talking about, you know, um, the medical industry. I know someone well that went in for a hernia. Mm -hmm. Was billed for the hernia. Everything had the operation, no, no post yeah. no review from the doctor, and found out he hadn't taken out the hernia. He what? Was going ahead. Yeah. Well, they, they, yeah, don't, yeah, they, yeah don't, so they don't take it up. Well, out. What they have to do is sew just, up a certain uh, area. Yeah. All a hernia yeah. is is that your intestines are bulging up out into your groin. I have one. 
But it, it, if it doesn't really bother you, mine doesn't bother me. Uh, yeah. They don't do anything about it because why? You know, it, it's got a three yeah. or four week recovery and things like that. And why do it unless it's absolutely necessary? Like our friend Bubbles uh, yeah. need, needs Bubbles. one, needs one, and he keeps holding it off and holding it off and holding it off. <laughs> Literally, right? Because it's bulging he, out the yeah. curb. <laughs> yeah, so he finally made the appointment that he was supposed to do it, and uh, they never called him back to say, hey, it's tomorrow. And it was, and they called him and said, where are you? And he said, you never called me. So, <laughs> Darn it. I know I've become used, since they started charging for missed appointments, many medical and dental mm -hmm. facilities, mm -hmm. I'm very diligent. I have a big calendar on the desk appointment at once well, so yeah. yeah i did that a couple times well i'll tell you what's bothering I, I just got this big hard on for doctors lately <laughs> you know mainly well, because maybe that's you, where i got as you get older like if i had a took did a blood test and it was off a bit there you go oh we'll we'll test you in a month or two and make sure it's okay yeah now it's like, you better go down and get another one right now. Yeah. You know? and, <laughs> and I wonder, yeah, if it's become such a profit-making venture. Well, no, like you know what issue. You know what the big problem with medicine is today? Big, pro mm. biggest problem is defensive medicine, where they don't want to get sued. So yeah. they tell you, do this, do that. You know, I yeah. have a couple of little, little not, nodules on my lung. Very normal. You might have them. Everybody gets them. <laughs> I have one that's been there since 2006, uh, 2016 uh -huh. and hasn't changed. Okay. It's at home now. Yeah, it's so, making a, you so know, you, so according to the literature I read, you can consider that benign. Okay, because it hasn't Whoa. done anything in five, six years. There's another one, but it's called prefusual or something like that. And they say <laughs> very rarely are they ever malignant. My well, do, my cool. doctor, when he saw these on the test, said, "You better get yourself a follow up, get another one, mm -hmm. another test in about six months." And I'm thinking to myself, "Why? I mean, neither of these things present any real danger to me. You know, yeah. I mean, one mm -hmm. could go wonky, but uh, it, it, <laughs> it's they're just not ones that should concern you." But he doesn't know that because he's not a lung doctor. Yeah, you know, he just right. sees these high numbers and he goes, "Oh, we better do something about this. Make sure." Oh, you, yay, yay, yay! Turns into Ricky Ricardo. Make sure you're yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. So but, I mean, um, with the, the thing that really turned my tide on menace, they've been given such, they've been so venerated over the decades, over the yeah. centuries. Yeah. And when my mother, you know, had this story, but she had colon cancer, she beat it. She beat it. She had people at her church praying in 15 minute increments around the clock, 24 hours, like for several days. And she beat colon cancer. So I was in Iowa doing, working for a news station that I liked a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, and, he, and this ice is over. I had a Miata and to go from Des Moines to central Illinois was a death mission. It was so many times I went 360, yeah. you know? Um, and so I didn't, wasn't going home regularly because uh, a month after she got a clean bill of health on the colon cancer, she was diagnosed with pancreatic and lung cancer. Oh, God. Dead later, dead, four months later. Mm -hmm. So I thought, she beat colon cancer, she'll beat lung and pancreatic cancer, you know, cancers. Uh, yeah. And I didn't go home nearly as often. My as second I wife, did. Ronnie, got pancreatic, and they did this operation oh, on her that is, it works, actually. Uh, it does work well if you if you are at a certain stage of it they can still yeah. maybe do something about it and it's it's called the uh, something method and she came out okay you know but that's a, a couple of years later she died of complications from that you know so yeah yeah you know pancre and pancre our, our, uh, bill hicks remember bill hicks that's who i was just gonna mention there's a good documentary on him yeah produced by his brother i think and kinison's was produced by kinison's brother i'm not sure about the hicks one, but it's yeah, good yeah yeah but i mean it, it, there was a perfect example of someone who had pancreatic cancer and uh, they told him you got six months to live and six months later he was gone you know yeah it's a fast killer and then at, she had love. at 32 at 32 
Man. Now, when your Isles of Langerhans get inflamed, when they go bright red, you well, kind of... That's over in England, isn't it? Yeah. Isles of Langerhans. <laughs> they have a great tourism trade. They've really done a lot lately. Yeah. Hey, yeah. listen, I just looked, and we're running out of time here. Of course, we're probably going to do another one so people can have these uh, and collect, okay. them, collect them all. Yeah, we... we uh, you yeah, get, you get, have you, at you, it. you get me really good numbers. People like us together. You know, well, good. and we still yeah. we haven't missed a beat, you know. No, I, I was really writing a journal. Another thing, there's a book called The Artist Way. Mm -hmm. And when I, I heard that Maria Bamford swore by it, I bought the book and it advises uh, writing three pages a day. It can be dribbled. It can be a riff on a song you like. But it's yeah. it's a I do it now. And I was writing about our chemistry yeah. oh, that, good. I mean, that I did. Good. Anyway, yeah, listen, uh, better go and I'll see you uh, perhaps in the next week or so. Okay. Stay right where Correct. you are, though, because we're going to do another one of these. But I don't, <laughs> I don't like that. Oh, I should start having clothes changes slightly go, offset. Go get clothes <laughs> changes. Right. I'll see you. Makeup. I'll see you in a couple of weeks, and I'll say to you, well, I'll, you'll hear what I'll say at the very beginning of it. Anyway, okay. thank you. Bye. Bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yes, talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I love, uh, isn't Lori the best? God, she's great. And we're gonna, we're gonna have her back on here. Let me get myself in the center here. There we go. Uh, oh, I feel much better, much better. Hey, we got a lot of people waiting to go on here. So let's, uh, let's just admit them uh, uh, all uh, as they, uh, let me see here. Oh, uh, 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 turn it off, Jeff. Turn it off. Wait a minute. No, somebody else has his audio up. Wait a minute. What is what is with? Uh, boy, this wait a minute. Hold on. A it's, it's, it's American it, Broadcast Network. No. Oh boy. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, let me see here. <laughs> let me put the zoom on here so we can see you. Oh, there we are. Okay. Hello, everybody. Gosh. Howdy, howdy. Yeah, howdy, howdy. How about you, Brian? How you doing? Where are you going right now? <laughs> um, I'm going home. I'm actually I'm going over the ultimate pass right now with the all the wheels, all the fans going on. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Oh, so I'm going home. Oh yeah, yeah. That's going the... home from Lodi. Right, right, right. Those are bird killers. Bird killers. Yeah, bird yeah. Killers. I uh, I used to I used to go I so used to just without crashing. Well, when I used to go out with oh, oh, oh. No, not that one. go out with Kathleen, I used to drive through over the Altamont Pass to get out to her place in uh, Tracy. Uh, yeah, and, I just went through Tracy. And I I couldn't decide whether I li I liked what they were doing, but I thought they were awfully ugly. Yeah. And what are you what are you doing, Phil, with a picture of my front door? Oh um, no, Phil's on. I I I'm I'm at the door. Let me in. Let me in. You don't have the key. <laughs> where did you uh, Where did you get that picture? Uh, Tony sent you some uh, 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 pajamas. Mm -hmm. he said they were delivered, and we weren't sure exactly where they were delivered. And uh, he. So I, I either called you or wrote you and said, go, go look outside your door. I think you've got uh, a package. Mm -hmm. And uh, he sent me the picture of the, uh, that the Amazon guy took of the front door. And so that's the picture of the front door. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, let's see. The, the, uh, the, uh, the, the way it was, uh, I didn't resize it, but the package is down in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got it. I got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't thanked I didn't he called the other night and I didn't thank him for them. Uh yeah. which I should have in spite of the fact that I'll probably never wear them. You know. Well, you know, you you can always, you know, dress alike, you look alike. What what was that show with Patty Duke? Um uh, um uh, um uh, the Patty Duke show. Yeah, that, okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, hello uh, Tony uh, Cousins. <laughs> hello to uh Kevin and hello to Josh uh who's here. And to uh, Alan and to Vernon, boy, a nice way to start off the show tonight. Um, I got to take a couple of, of aspirin here uh, or something. I'll, I'll, I'll I, be I pulling listen. up. Hmm? I'll be pulling up to my driveway in one hour, so it's hmm. perfect timing. 
55 minutes to my house. Oh, 55 minutes to your house? Yeah, I timed it perfectly. I left work knowing that I'd be on the show, and then, yep. Yeah, but wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You say it's taking and take you an hour to get home, yet you're 55 minutes. You, you, no, no, no. Yeah. It's an hour and a half from Lodi, and there's oh. no traffic tonight. So I left right when you went on the show, but I was listening to the Giants game. And then, uh, but right now it says I have 55 minutes until I'm home. So this will be perfect. Do you do that every day, that many miles? Three days a week. Three days a week. Okay, because I used yeah, to go up to I used to go up to Sacramento three days a week, and man, uh, an hour and a half drive both ways is a is hell. But yeah, but they they pay me for the drive, and they pay me they pay me well. So what do you mean they pay you for the drive? Explain that. They pay me personal personal car usage. So every mile I go, they pay a certain amount. Oh really? So, Oh, okay. Because it's like you're wearing tear on your car and stuff like that, but yeah, it's a it's it's fine. I'm I'm very happy in my company, so that's good. So, anybody notice about so what, what's happening in Russia tonight? No, I I can't really I couldn't really figure it out entirely, but you mm -hmm. know that you know the Wagner Group. Yeah, they, they, a bunch of them got killed. Well, right. uh, they 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 were they, one of their helicopters were attacked or something. I don't know. And now they've declared war against Russia. <laughs> Basically, the country. They're just a bunch of Wagner. Guys. Wagner are some pretty bad asses, man. Mercenaries. Yeah, they're mercenaries. They didn't do that well in in Ukraine. They didn't do that badly in Ukraine either. I mean, <laughs> you know, they. they but uh, at least there's some kind of dissension going on in Russia. It's about the goddamn time, even if it is the Wagner Group. You know, so anyway, so uh, 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 I'm trying to think. Is there, Phil, do you have anything you want to talk about? No. Well, yeah, there's the uh, Elon Musk, uh, 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 what's his name, Zuckerberg, are uh, talking about well, having we, a. We mentioned uh, that two nights ago. We, last night. We mentioned night. that two nights. Was it last night or two nights ago? I, I mentioned I, that. I had to go to sleep early last night. Well, Sorry. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What? Well, yeah. Uh, well, I, I've got I've got some bad jokes uh, no about the. Uh, <laughs> uh, what about? Do you have submarine. any good jokes? Do you have any good jokes? That's yeah. all his jokes. You know, you know, I you know what I've always disliked essentially are jokes. You know, hey, I got a joke to tell you, and then somebody tells you the joke, and the timing is off, and they they don't get the ending right, and they screw the whole thing up. Uh, jokes are the worst thing ever. I mean, you're either a funny person or you're not a funny person. You don't have to tell a joke to make yourself funny. Get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So two guys walk into a bar. You know. <laughs> well, the one I like is two Jews walk into a bar and they buy it. So that's. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Somebody keeps calling me on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's somebody you know, actually. Kind of. That's funny. Yeah, that's funny. On Facebook? Oh, you're not uh, telling the joke yet. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, okay. Here, here you go. You know, the uh, look at your Look at your chroma key. Off. Look at your chroma key. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's uh, probably lost the... Uh, uh, the thing. Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> anyway, uh, the uh, screeching halt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, screeching did you hear halt. T-shirts are half off at the uh, Ocean Horizon uh, website. Yeah. Are they? Yeah. Yeah. Tonight on the news, they said they the company has said they're probably not going to be back in business uh, very soon. No. I uh, no, I guess not. Like, is anybody going to write in the ride in that damn thing? No. Not in that one, that's for sure. Uh, well, it, it's not available. Well, at least they went out with a bang. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's well, no the, it, it, what's come out on this is that uh, it seems as though they probably didn't. They didn't probably even know what happened to them. I mean, it was that fast. Am I right, Kevin? Was that? 
Huh? You know what it probably sounded like? What? That. There was no explosion. There was nothing. It was just a thud. It just everything imploded. It's a, but, I've heard an, a cylinder explode, and it's just a boom. They, well, they, and that was the people who have described it say it may have happened in 300 or 3,000 milliseconds. Yeah. Yeah. So, quick. so these guys were alive one minute, and the next minute they weren't, you know. No, yeah. second. Yeah. They I wonder when you go that fast if you still have some kind of sentient. That's probably uh, why they didn't understand what they heard. That could be. Uh, this, this, was a, this was a bad idea. Okay. <laughs> so. And forget yeah. about recovering anybody. Oh, well, no, they're not going to. Uh, if there is anybody, you know, uh, who knows what that implosion did. Um, Create a lot of fish food. Well, no. you know, at that, at that depth, uh, things crush and, and become just small little stuff. You know, I mean, I don't think that they'll ever find remains. Uh, you know, that's not going to happen. Do you know that every 33 feet that they descend or uh, into water is doubles the uh, pressure? Uh, so each atmosphere mm -hmm. uh, of pressure doubles at 33 feet, 66, uh, and, and so forth. Yeah. 5,000 PSI down there. How yeah. much? Yeah. Uh, is that down at the Titanic? That's well, the pressure. Uh, yeah, five thousand per square inch. So you figure five thousand pounds of pressure per square inch. Okay, but they didn't even get down that far. They weren't down very far. They were down enough so the thing would implode. They were about three quarters, they think, because what they said it was an hour 30, and a half, and it takes two hours to get down there. Mm. They were about probably about three quarters of the way down. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. They said uh, they believe that the Navy heard the sound at 3,500 feet, uh, and uh, the vessel was uh, the debris field was about 1,600 feet off the uh, bow of the uh, Titanic. Yeah. Yeah, so so they lost contact at uh, one one hour and four. What do they say? One hour and forty five minutes. Yeah, somewhere around there. That that late? I thought it was earlier. No, it was they, they they figured? I figured that if it takes two hours to get down there, mm -hmm. they were at one forty five. They were fifteen minutes away. Okay. So they were two thirds of the way down there, three quarters of the way down there. Yeah, well, I I, I you know I have. The guy who died, the head of the company who died, I have no, oh. I have no sympathy for him. It's, no. it's coming. Did you hear? Huh? Did you hear about the 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 father and son? The father wanted to go. The son didn't want to go, but it was Father's Day, so the son reluctantly went Holy with him. Shit. He was a pa yeah. Pakistani billionaire, and so they end up going down and they interviewed the the wife today, and oh my God, it's like <laughs> well, gee, the kid, the kid missed a chance to be a billionaire. And James Cameron yeah. said. They were screwed. They they were they were warned many times that it was a catastrophe you know, waiting to happen. The, the company they don't hire seasoned uh, engineers. They hire kids straight out of college, and uh, they they don't. Uh, you know, I was listening to a, an interview. I think it might have been with Cameron, but uh, that they they don't. Uh, you know, they don't hire seasoned engineers and. Uh, they said they had NASA engineers that oh, were helping and, them. And, and they also try to use uh, things that they can buy on the open market to make their craft. Mm -hmm. um, but all, all of that doesn't matter unless they test. Test and test and test. It doesn't matter who's building the stuff or what they're building it out of. You have to do the testing. And if they do the testing on humans, this is the risk. Yep. Well, you know, also, also, uh, also, Cameron said that they he he called uh, some of his friends. He called Ballard, as a matter of fact, uh, and they were discussing this on the phone, like what could have happened to it. And they immediately knew what happened to it on Sunday. They immediately mm -hmm. knew because they knew the craft and they knew what the problems would be with it, and that, uh, that, uh, that uh, they had kind of warned against it. And they knew exactly what had happened, but they said they didn't say anything until the official word from the uh, the Navy because they just didn't want to seem like they were grandstanding or anything else, you know. And it wouldn't have helped if they had said it anyway. This is yeah. a repeat of history. 
Wasn't it Icarus that made wings of wax and flew into the sun? No, it's a repeat of history with the Titanic. Yeah, well, Titanic too. No, yeah, because, billionaires. You know, no, because because uh, Titanic, the captain knew or was warned that he shouldn't go into the ice field at, 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 in the dark because there was no moon out and you couldn't see anything, and that if he was going to go, go at a very slow speed, and he didn't. And that's what happened with the Titanic. And um, I kind of like what uh, Drudge had as a headline. He said, five more people uh, are, are claimed by the Titanic. You know, uh, yeah, they, it, had a, hmm? they had a scoreboard. It said, Titanic 2, billionaires 0. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's a, it, it, you know. It's very sad what went on. It's very sad what took place. But, you know, I mean, that's what you get for, you know, and the trouble is people I feel bad for are the innocent people there who didn't know the science of it all, you know? And and it, it, I believe me, I well, I would have never gone in that thing. It looks so rinky-dink. I mean, they bought a couple of TV monitors from Best Buy to hang in the, in the ship. And I mean, if you saw that thing, it was just, it was it was uh, it was a, a rinky dink operation. That's that's mm -hmm. what they were talking about. That they they use just you know things that they can buy in the open <clears> market, <throat> like the uh, little controller uh, that the, they use to steer it. Well, you know, I, that's the least yeah. of the things that bothers me because you know a, a joystick for a video game is probably as accurate as any kind of device you could use. Uh, it just doesn't seem terribly scientific. You know. Jeff is raising his hand. Yes, Jeff. Well, my my idea about this is there shouldn't have been people in this. Right. Why? They should build a prototype that could do ninety percent of the work without any thought. Was this the first simple time? computer? No, but no, but wow. if you wanted to take people down there, you couldn't do that no, without putting them. These guys were tourists. Oh. Yeah, but was this the first time that that ship had gone down? No, 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 no. no. No, no it's as, a, down as there a matter before. of fact, they did a thing on CBS uh, Sunday morning uh, where David Pogue, the technology writer, actually went down in the thing. But right. they, they had to come back up because something was wrong with it. And then <clears> uh, he they went back to <clears> the uh, to Gr uh, Groton, Connecticut or wherever. I don't know where they ever they take <laughs> off from. And uh, they told everybody, well, we'll take you out to the shelf here and we'll take you down a bit and uh, let you see what this thing does. And he didn't go on that. He decided it supposedly that... Supposedly had gone down somewhere around 30 times, and that's probably the reason why it imploded. Well, be, no, be, uh, uh, Cameron says that, that, uh, that every time he went down, it just crushed the thing a little bit yeah, more and a little bit more and yeah, a little bit more. Metal. And that's like I was t saying last night with the hydro testing of a cylinder. That's exactly what happens. Cameron I, says his, his vessels, his whatever, his... Um, the are submersibles all are all made out of steel, right? You know, uh, yeah, carbon steel. Uh, yeah, I my scuba tanks are happen to be steel, but there are aluminum scuba tanks as well. And uh, every five years, they have to be hydro tested and certified by DOT or Department of Transportation. Mm -hmm. uh, That's what I was talking about last night, Phil. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I was saying, I used to that, fill them, hmm? I used to fill those, yeah. So all kinds of other gases in them. Yeah. So how, how deep do you have you gone? Me, uh, 150 feet. But see, those those aren't those aren't made to go 12,000 feet. No. Oh, of course not. But... Could you see the Titanic from there? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a there's a ship, a landing docking ship in the, in the Florida Keys that I've dove eight times, and uh, it's on sand. It's at 135 feet. And the uh, pilot house is at 50 feet. And I've uh, entered the ship, and uh, since uh, they sunk it in as an artificial reef in like 2001, I've been diving mm -hmm. that ship every couple of years and seeing the the differences that mm -hmm. they uh, they do. It's it's very it's very interesting. It's a but you know, if you're just an average person and you go, hey, I got 200, I got 250 thousand dollars. Uh, I think I'll buy my son and m me a ticket to it or whatever, and you don't know any different. You know, you 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 assume these no. people have tested this thing and that it's you know, 
<laughs> I mean, what would stop me is when you the, when you sign the release. No, I I, I yeah. can't believe that these people didn't know the risks. Yeah. And, and, uh, Same thing know, as going up in one of Bezos flying dicks. <laughs> well, they're know, they're probably safer. They're probably safer. I oh, yeah. doubt it. They're no they're no different. They're all experimental. Oh. Yeah. Well. Uh, SpaceX's are pretty solid. You know, they they're still uh, capable. You know what? Okay. <laughs> well, Be Bezos, Bezos, Bezos is not put together as well as the SpaceX. That's right. Bezos, Bezos is not SpaceX. I mean, SpaceX, right. the rockets have an ejection thing, so that if it starts to have a problem, they can eject the whole uh, nose cone and everything. As it takes off, so right. it, you know, I mean, there, there are a lot of precautions. That, they can blow up though if something. Of fails. course, they can if blow up. Systems all, blow, you know, they, fails. They can blow yeah, up. But you know, air, airliners can crash too. You know, I mean, NASA hasn't done that great of a job either. We've well, I mean, uh, let, let's look at flying. I mean, how uh, how how right. safe is flying to, if you think about it? You know, we're doing the most unnatural thing you could possibly do. We're getting an aluminum tube and letting somebody hurl you across the United States. You know, and right, but uh, they're tested and they're certified for you exactly, know, exactly, right. exactly. Yeah. And that's what didn't happen here, and that's why we got five dead people. Yeah, uh, f four of which didn't deserve to die. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I'm not. Be I'm not cutting any any slack for the guy that owned the company they say he knew how bad it was that he had his suspicions but he didn't tell anybody not that this matters but the guy was a republican supporter of trump <laughs> was he really yeah this guy allen never stops He's not like, that it, i just record. said not that it matters but it just uh, it, obviously record. obviously it does matter to you Right, I, I'm just tired of hearing it. Well, then don't don't listen. To <laughs> I, I well, truthfully, you come I don't on the show with right. jokes that aren't funny. Me. Well, Alan, well, it's look, Alan, Alan, funny Alan, Alan look, who's talking. look who's talking, Alan. Yeah. Yeah. Look who's Alan said, sent Alan. me a funny I joke. I said yesterday. like me. I just said <laughs> like me. Hey, Alan sent me a funny joke yesterday. Uh, right. Was, uh, two women talking on a plane. One of them was the stewardess, and the other was a passenger. And the passenger says. How many times can a plane crash? And the stewardess says only once. Uh, I thought that was pretty cute. Really? Sure, a lot oh better if you God. read it the way it's. it's my on my the joke, joke was the. Uh, did you know that there uh, that only uh, planes only crash on landing? That's not true. <laughs> No, they crash on landing. You got. You can't crash while you're in the air. You can have a mid-air collision. Collision. They, they call it a mid-air collision. No, that's a mid-air collision. Crashing is when you hit the ground. Well, I'm not, not going to try and after a mid-air collision. I'm not going to try and justify the joke. Mid-air collusion. Collusion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would say. Yeah. Hey, uh, you were talking about having an aspirin or a Tylenol. Are you going to cut it, cut it up and snort it? I, you know, I listened to the first half hour of your sh of your show. Yeah, we're, 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 uh, Lori and I were confessing all our drug sins. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, I, I I had made a couple of runs for you to Howard's house, but it was a hundred dollars here and a hundred dollars there. Oh, now you outed our our dealer. Oh, he's dead. Howard dead? <laughs> yeah, he died of cancer. Bring so me. you were a drug runner before you were a cop. Didn't he I wind up it. working in the porn field after a while? Yeah, he was the president of uh, some porn company, and uh, he was active in the AVN. Do you thing. Imagine, the guy who sold me cocaine became a pornographer. Who could have thought? <laughs> you know, What was that motorcycle show, uh, Sons of Anarchy? Yeah. He, was a, he was the porn consultant for that. <laughs> <laughs> But he died? I didn't know he died. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah I guess I do vaguely. Yeah, he had brain cancer. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, so what do you think his mother would have said? What do you mean? Don't vote for Donald Trump. You know, yeah, he was actually a Vidal Sassoon trained hair cutter. He used to cut mm -hmm. your hair. Cut mine, too. Yeah, he used to cut my Coke, too. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> But your, your fans used to bring more Coke 
uh, to to your events, you never had a buy if you didn't want to. Well, yeah. well no, I you know I I had a, I had a uh, I won't say who my dealer was because he's still around, yeah. but uh, uh, it, 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 Howard was not my major dealer. Okay. No, but at two in the morning he was available. <laughs> yes, he made he made deliveries. Yeah. yeah. But those were the old days. I don't do drugs anymore. I mean, you know, except for the stuff the doctor prescribes. So, you know, yeah. So. Which, Which is, is probably more dangerous. You're probably right. You know. So. Um, but uh, um, um, what was I going to say? I had something I wanted to bring up, and I now I forget what it is. Mm. You know, I'm completely out of it these the last couple of nights. I can't come up with stuff to talk about. And there is, yeah. you know, there is stuff to talk about. Amazon is being uh, sued by the government. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. Okay, so we had we have Amazon. Do you know about this? They're being uh, the government is uh, suing Amazon for misrepresenting Prime, Amazon Prime, and not that's, making that's... it difficult for people to quit Prime if they want to quit Prime, and making it oh. difficult for them in lots of ways with the Prime program which is there i don't believe it all you gotta do is take your credit card off of it and and they can't charge anything well you know the idea of of the government going after them is to protect the public who doesn't know what you know okay, okay. yeah i mean you know okay i just t do away with my card but i for instance i don't want to have to do away with my card that's a pain in the ass you know you take i just card want off of amazon prime and they don't charge well you. anyway Here's what happened with me. I had my I had an account with uh, with Amazon where I got Amazon Prime, uh, and I got it because Shecky put me on his account. He did I he didn't I I was my things weren't charged to his account. Okay, but I was simply part of his thing, and I could use my account right for years. Well, apparently, I think they've done away with that. But I was grandfathered into it, so up until recently, I was on his account. Uh, and you see, because he always said I can I can put somebody on my uh, on my account through my account so that you can use yours and whatever. Uh, are people aware that this existed for a while? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So today we figured I'll go on Marjorie's, but we couldn't figure out how to do it, and all of a sudden we realized that program really doesn't exist like that. Mm -hmm. So now I've, Marjorie's calling them to see what to do, and there she's yelling into the phone because they're just, they're just not helping her at all. They're just driving her crazy. And finally she gave up, and then I went on. I said, look, I'll just join, okay? I'll take Amazon Prime. Oh, you don't have to. Why don't you just use Marjorie's account and use your credit card <clears throat> on her account? If I use, put her credit card, my credit card on her account, then everything she charges goes to my no, credit card. You can, pick, you can pick which credit card you want to use. No, I have no. uh, one account, but I use it for business and I use it for no, personal. No, but you have two different, yeah, but this is different. Two different cards. No, it, it, anyway. And hey, I deliver you a card? So hmm. now I, I, I decide, well... I'll, I'll buy it. What the hell? You know, Marjorie, don't go to the trouble. I tell, uh, you know. Is it $175? Uh, well, no, it, it's, it's uh, well, it says there on the thing, it says uh, four ninety nine a month. And I heard huh? it was $139 a year. 159 yeah. No, 139 my friend. I did it today. And it's going uh, to well, 175 <clears throat> Okay. I did it today. It's 139 yeah. Thanks. But what a happened month? was it said four nine four fourteen ninety nine a month, right? And then I was just I wanted to know how do I get the dollar one hundred and thirty nine dollars for twelve <laughs> months? You know that's cheaper. <clears throat> so I call up Amazon. First of all, trying to get anybody on Amazon these days is impossible. You know you got to finally I finally get a human being, and this human being I swear to you couldn't speak English. I mean it was just impossible. <laughs> Uh, and I said, uh, uh, and, and uh, I told them what my problem was, and then I couldn't understand their reply, and they couldn't understand what I was asking. And then I said, can you turn me over to somebody who speaks better English than you do? 
and it was just horrible. And all of a sudden, I look at my my Amazon page, and it says, you know, big letters, fourteen ninety nine a month, and then in very tiny letters for all other plans, click here. <laughs> so I clicked there, and what I got was uh, for a hundred and thirty nine, maybe it was one hundred and forty nine. I'd have to look at it again uh, a month. Uh, you get it. So I just clicked it and did it and hung up on them. But Amazon has become this crap show. Just Why amazing. Why you just use Marjorie Sinek? I'm telling you, we couldn't do it. We asked them. <laughs> you don't have to ask them. We you asked know, them, Phil. You sign in as Marjorie. Yes, I don't want to sign in as Marjorie. I already have an account there. I can look back at all my old purchases. It recognizes me. What, I have to start signing in as her? Yeah. No. Okay, so but I didn't have to sign in. As, I didn't have to sign in as, in as Shecky. Okay, never had to sign in as Shecky, and I got the account for free because of him paying one hundred and thirty nine dollars every year or something. So, so is his account expired now? I imagine it expired. He has, you know. I know, but he may have paid for the full year, and well, it could be they also said to. Uh, to uh, Amazon, please stop the Amazon service. Uh, this person has passed away, and they just ended it all. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. Uh, Are do either you or your wife uh, belong to Citibank? No. Have a Citibank? Okay, because I have Citibank, and with my account, my Amazon Prime, you charge it to your debit card, and they pay you the money back. And by the way, you're right. I was wrong. It wasn't 159. You're right. It's 139. I just looked. Yes. Right. But yeah, they pay you the money back. You charge it to your to your debit card, and they yeah, see it. Yeah, but I'm not going to go get a Citibank card I'm, just for that. I'm not saying that. I'm just asking if you had Citibank. No. no. Okay. No mm -hmm. problem. What uh, what uh, what what what's your what's your uh, I, your phone service? What company are you with? Comcast Xfinity. Oh well, you see, if you were with AT and T. You get uh, <laughs> HBO Max for free. Yeah, he's I get a lot them, of other giving stuff. them the horns. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, he's giving them the horns. Phil came over on his way from his drug dealer and hooked it up for me for free. Yeah. Really? I, I once had one of those boxes back in the days of analog. I got every channel. I got Playboy TV. I got HBO. I got all the pay per view. Uh, I think the box cost me 130 bucks. If you had spent 140, you would you would have got play play group. Yeah, but that TV. was illegal, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm not talking about illegal. I AT and T gives me Max, as it's called now. Uh, you know. By the way, the I guy get I get I have AT and T on my iPhone, and I yeah. get the HBO Max free. Yeah. I never watch it though. Oh, so um, um, let me go to Josh here for a second. Mm -hmm. Josh, anything we should know about? Anything that's in interesting you uh, politically out there? Well, I suppose they're gonna. I watched. I did watch some of the Durham testimony the other night. It was a little odd. Um, that was some pretty strange stuff right there. It was a little stupid, honestly. I, you know, they tried to give some airtime to sort of gen that up a little bit but I mean in the end he investigated for three and a half years and basically found nothing other than in his opinion he would have done it differently okay I mean Who's you would have probably done it differently and then I would have done it I mean you go ask 10 people how they would have done the investigation you get 10 different answers he wasn't asked to decide how he would have run the investigation he was asked to decide if he could find any crimes and you know he couldn't find any crimes so i mean i thought that was a fairly uh weird deal the other night i, I watched a little bit of it um who is durham you know so special prosecutor you know i mean durham was the special prosecutor appointed to investigate the origins of the russia collusion probe that was oh. done years ago that everyone's okay. forgotten about he was appointed and, and by I'm trump was he not doing. yeah right yeah. yeah because he thought that it was all fake and they were out to get him and they were spying on him and all that so he appointed this guy to do it which really never should have appointed anyway this this person 
John Durham, who everyone said was, you know, this straight arrow and all that, is really kind of a prick. And he, he is super close to Bill Barr, the former attorney general who appointed him. I mean, you know, they were taking trips together all the time and all this other stuff, you know, and that that's who he appointed to be the independent uh. Council, you know, so what that part was of a, independent didn't they? Didn't they? Didn't they? Uh, didn't you know, they so understand? I mean, which whatever they appointed whoever, and you know, I mean, he did work for the DOJ as a uh, prosecutor and U.S. attorney and all that. I mean, you know, so I can deal with you know the fact that ideally he would have decent integrity and and would act independently, and I think for the most part, you know, that he did. Uh, and I'm not really blaming him, although I'm not really a fan of him. I'm just saying that he did go on for about three and a half years, and basically it was another. Uh, well, he kept getting a paycheck. You know, it was a yeah, but I mean, it was like a, another Benghazi. You know that well, they had that thing with Bill Clinton in the '90s, right, with that investment thing or whatever that he did that they looked into for uh, water. Yeah. You know, yeah, you know, for like forever. And then when it was all done, you know, there was nothing. And then they didn't really, you know, bring it up again because it was nothing. You know, I mean, it was sort of like that. Well, I mean, you, you know what I'm tired of really is is all these various people going after whoever <laughs> simply because they're trying to get even for something the other party has done. Yeah, you know, so I mean, Republicans uh, say that they weren't going to uh, uh, go after Biden for impeachment. You know, I mean, well, what's uh, what are you going to impeach him on? I don't know. What they impeach Trump on bullshit? Well, they Why didn't, no, they, they didn't. Trump? They didn't impeach Trump on bullshit. It was BS, straight up BS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If nobody responds to Phil, we can just go on. Yeah, we can just move on. Yeah, rather yeah, than really. argue that one. We knew that that was coming up. Well, yeah, don't worry. We got it. We got him this time, Phil. We got him this time. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. What about Hunter? You know, he's, what? Uh, hey, oh, hey, no. stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. No, stop it. Because what you're everybody doing, drink. You, this everybody has nothing. Yeah, it has nothing to do with Hunter, okay? Hunter's another deal altogether. If you want to talk about Hunter, we'll talk about Hunter, and at no point will I say, well, what about Trump, okay? That'll be interesting. <laughs> no, but I mean, I mean uh, uh, you know, you, you always drive this thing off the road from what we're discussing. Trump, if he did what he did, he did it in spite of the fact that Hunter Biden exists. Right. Okay. All right. Phil, your arguments are always predictive. We yes. always can predict the way you're going to go. Hunter's guilty. He, he, he admitted he, he's guilty. Of course, he admits I, it. We know that. He admits Does that it. expunge him? He's admits it. Did get him home security or home home detention? No, he's uh, he. It's it's a misdemeanor, and he's he's admitting his guilt, and uh, we get on with life. You know. Right. Yeah. Do you get? Have you guys seen? So, the, yesterday and today, I saw a commercial, and I don't know whose whose commercial it is, but they show Trump, and they say that that they show Trump's all of his all of his records, you know, the stuff in the bathroom, those pictures. But then they show him, you know, they do a montage of him saying about how anybody who's in the White House that has classified documents should be persecuted, and blah blah blah. blah. This, this commercial's popped up the last couple of days when I was in Lodi. Well, he did while he was in office. He About said that yeah. anybody, who, because he was referring to Hillary, he was trying to pillar, yeah. pillory Hillary, and and uh, he said that anybody who was caught with, uh, you know, right. s secret documents and blah, 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 should go to prison for five years or something yeah. like that. But, but, and, but there's a commercial now that just started that, that has this and has that little montage of that. But it must be from the Democrats. But uh, I don't know if somebody was paying for that. So, you sure it wasn't the Lincoln Project? It may have been, but I don't think they had commercials on TV. But yes, they did. I'll, I'll have to see yeah. it again. Let's yeah, see. but yeah, they well, did. Yeah. They were anti-Trump commercials. Yeah. So it, it, it may be that, but those are those are just starting. So it's pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah, but you know, I mean, let's uh, enough with the well. What about Hillary? 
Well, you know, what about Hillary? You know. Okay. Well, no, I'm sorry. The FBI investigated her and probably probably prevented her from becoming president of the United States. I believe. That's what, that's yeah. what Durham was talking about. Is that there was a no, double standard? Dur Durham's was about was basically about the uh, 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 the, the Russian the Ru no the Russian yeah the Russian uh, uh, the dirty interference dossier. interference into uh, the election. Yeah. Oh, hey! Oh. I, I, Go ahead, Phil. That's in the dossier. Head. He just has ahead, key. Phil, he has, he has key dossier. words. He doesn't know what he's talking about, but he just has key words. Oh, Dirty dossier. And what about the what about the uh, the uh, dossier? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. What about oh, Hunter? Phil. Yeah. What about oh, Hunter? Yeah. yeah well, you Collusion. See, I mean, Hunter yeah. has admitted his guilt. Okay, and this is on the tax stuff, you know. And uh, so, uh, case closed. Goodbye. How now on to the next topic. Them? What? How much did, How much tax were they talking about? I said a couple hundred thousand dollars he owed or something, or is it maybe a million? I don't know. I can't remember. It was uh, How much do you know, Vernon? How much money it was? Hmm. Yeah. So, it, but just to give Phil a little bit of credit, it was charged as a felony because that's a lot of money. And... Um, but they, you know, they in the court for whatever reason uh, allowed him to plead guilty to a misdemeanor. Yeah. So that's okay. what happened. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think he also paid back a substantial amount of, of the money. Did he? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Before, before the uh, legal stuff happened. Well, Hunter has been a diversion to try and as Phil did, uh, take any onus off of Trump's guilt. And they were just, oh, what about Hunter? You know, it always turn around and go, what about Hunter? Well, what about Hunter? It has nothing to do with the Trump thing. If Trump's a criminal, if Trump's a crook, he broke the law, then he deserves to stand up for his crimes, right? I thought it was 10% for the big guy, you know? What? 10% for the big guy. Uh, I think that the Hunter diversion was to keep it off of Biden's back, not necessarily Trump. Oh, yeah. All of a sudden, Trump would want to keep something off of Biden's back. No, Trump is not keeping it off of Biden's back. I think there's a diversion uh, that, you know, uh, they were going after Trump to stay to keep things off of Biden's back. But uh, his son, they were going. I'll tell, you, got, I'll tell you, uh, Hunter Biden, up Hunter Biden was nailed because he happens to be Biden's son. Okay, if he wasn't Biden's son, he probably wouldn't be in trouble right now. He would have gotten have away with it. Millions of dollars if he wasn't but Biden's he may, son. But he may have gotten away with it if he wasn't Biden's son. But he would what never have gotten the money if he wasn't Biden's son. That's the problem. Gotten what money? The millions of dollars from Burisma. No, no, that China. had nothing to do what with about? that. It had nothing to do with that. This was him not paying taxes on money. On that earned. money. Not just yeah. on that money, on just money in general. Phil, what about you know, this $2 you know, million dollar deal? And if Trump had never ran for president, he wouldn't be in trouble let, right let now. Go, let me go to the expert here. Josh, uh, do you know about the uh, whole Hunter Biden thing? I don't know, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, did they nail him on Burisma or did they nail him on just not paying taxes? Well, just not paying taxes. I mean, it's money that was income from, you know, his business operations, part of which might have been with this Burisma company or whatever. I mean, I mean, I don't care. I'm because I'm not here to, to defend him. I mean, I've said before, I don't defend him. I think I think just like Papadopoulos and and Flynn and all these other guys that were willing to get in bed with these Russians and all that. I think they're despicable. They make me sick. Hunter Biden makes me sick. Willing to go over there and do business with these. Russian, but, no, it wasn't Russian. That was and your, all these other people who fucking well, can't stand this country. Was it? They weren't Russians. Yeah. They were Ukrainians. Burisma's a Ukrainian company. Right. Correct. Yeah. But they're all tied in with these Russian jerk offs over there. Oh, I right. mean, that's, that's right. what I'm saying. I, they want to go over there and make all this money off all these dictators and communists and all the rest. I mean, I'm not here to defend Hunter Biden at all. If he would have went to prison for this, I wasn't going to shed any tears from him and come on here and say. What about this other guy or that guy? I don't care. I mean, but he didn't have to go to jail because he didn't fight it. He 
paid his, you know, money and, and he took the punishment that they agreed to and that's his right and that's the court's right to work out that deal at their discretion and that's what they did. But I mean, but, you know, and it's besides the fact, but I'm just saying, do I sit here personally and I think that he's a good guy? No. Do I think he's really a good American? No. 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 Would I be proud of him? No. But he's not my son. You know, but I, do I blame Joe Biden for saying that he's proud of him and stuff? No. no. Well, you think you think guy's gonna go on television and say that's my kid and I think he's a fucking piece of shit? <laughs> I mean, you know. I mean, so I mean, you know, that's here nor there, I guess. I'm just saying, I I don't think he's a good guy. You know, no. if Hunter Biden ran for something tomorrow, I, hell, I'd work against him. You know. Because I think he's a bit of a sleazebag. Now, maybe he was, and now maybe he is all turned around now, and he's, you know, back on a good path or whatever. Yeah, but the, yeah, other, the, other thing, the, the other thing they had him on was uh, getting a gun permit while mm -hmm. uh, being using drugs. Yeah. Right. And uh, yeah. But they what they did, they put him into a diversion uh, right. operation on that. So that he, if he just doesn't do uh, any drugs anymore and isn't caught doing them, uh, mm -hmm. then they won't charge him with that felony. Yeah, it's I mean, a pretty strong enough, felony. You know. Yeah, but I, I just, you know, I, 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 I just view a lot of those people in the same light. You know, I mean, like I said, you know, someone like Flynn who was willing to do business with Russian mobsters and and people in Turkey and all. I mean, I, I, I well, please, you're talking about it. somebody uh, Phil loves. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, well, I don't, you know. I thought, uh, uh, I know, was Flynn was pardoned, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Trump. Uh, but uh, his his crime was, ta uh, at the beginning of the administration, was talking to an ambassador uh, uh, at, at, a, at a party. Uh, you know, uh, he was also I, charged with no, lying no, no. to the FBI. His crime was make was lying to the FBI about phone calls that he made uh, to work out deals before he was legally entitled to do so as ambassador. So was uh, he well, sorry, as national security advisor? Was um, he in trap? You know, he had no right to do so, and it was probably a violation of law, which they couldn't really prove. So they didn't pursue it. What they pursued was the fact that the, what they could prove was that when they investigated and questioned him about it, that he lied. You know, it was and, a procedure. It was a procedural accusation. No, uh, it wasn't. The accusation was that he lied to the FBI, which he in fact did. You know, when you give a deposition Ugh. and you say one thing, and then you know they say, "Oh, well, you said this in a previous deposition, so therefore there's a lie." Uh, that's the. It was some sort of procedural thing like that. It's all pray for it, Phil. First of all, it wasn't, and I'm not going to argue the point. But second of all, I'm not talking about his crime. He can lie to the FBI all he wants. People lie to the police all the time. I'm not talking about his crime. I'm talking about folks like him and this Papadopoulos guy and all the rest of them who are willing to go with these paramilitary organizations that they want to run or, or be mercenaries and getting these sleazy deals where he's going to work for the Turkish government to kidnap a guy that Turkey wants back into Turkey and New York and smuggle him back over there. And he's going to go to Russia and do business with all the Russians so he can make a little bit of money. And this is the guy that wore the uniform just before that and then couldn't wait to get out so he could make money on a bunch of people that hate this country, that have killed American troops and other countries. You know? If the Russians came to my house today and said they'd want, they, were, they would make me rich, Thanks, but no thanks. I'll keep right on going the path that I'm going. Because Papadopoulos, I'm not doing deals with them. Papadopoulos ended up suing, and uh, and not only was he exonerated, but uh, he, uh, he 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 won his case, and they found that he didn't do anything wrong. Um, Again, not the point. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about they can have perfectly legal activities going on that I'm telling you I think is sleazy. That's all that I'm saying. I don't care about the shit that you want to re-argue from five years ago. It, I don't fucking care about that. Well, your premise is that these folks, no, I what he's saying, what he's saying, a guy like Hunter Biden. He was saying this guy, Papadopoulos, was highly immoral in his activities, and he does not approve of it, Phil. 
Yeah, well, what I'm saying is, is that his 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 take on you know, the fact- you, if if this were World War II, you'd be sitting here defending Mussolini. You know that <laughs> you really would. He made the trains. He made the trains run on time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the about clocks World were right II, twice a day. I bought I bought a car uh, Wednesday that was made by a Nazi sympathizer. Uh, and you're Jewish. Yeah. yeah. Now, now he's trying to brag that he bought a new car. He, no, he, he, did, he actually car. didn't buy a new car. Oh, he didn't? He bought a very old car. Yeah. Oh. I'll show you. No, no, you don't have to show us, Phil. Yeah. And please, don't send me any more pictures of you having dinner with people. <laughs> oh, well, I was just trying to include you. No, uh, I didn't with... want to be included. I, I'm well, not there. I can't eat with you. Therefore, I don't want to be included. Well, salivate. Uh, yeah, I bought a 100-year-old car. Why did you buy that? I was it looking. Was made in the same book. year he was born. I, yeah, I, it's even older than you, Alex. Yeah. Uh, I was looking at Facebook Marketplace, and I said, mm-hmm. "That's interesting. Uh, it'll be a good sign in front of the store." So uh, I'm going to park it in front of the store. And how do you keep uh, it from getting tickets? It's my parking lot. Oh, okay. And uh, and and, yeah, and what, what kind of ca- what kind of car is it? It's a 1923 Ford Model T Roadster. You should have had it put on the roof of the uh, building. Uh, uh, Brian? Yes? Uh, how much is that car worth? Uh, $10,000. Yeah, that's what that's I what, paid. That's what, he, that's what he paid for. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Phil, uh, talk to me. I consulted him on this deal, though. <laughs> Full disclosure, Brian. Yeah, <laughs> this car had a frame off restoration. It's so oh. perfect. You know, when I saw it, you know, I figured I'd take a look. Why did you pop by? Why did you spend ten thousand dollars on that film? It's, it's worth the tr- business. It, it was going to go in his penis stuff, but he ended up getting a car. <laughs> oh, by the yeah. way, the machine you bought the uh, studio, the Apple Studio, they're now five hundred dollars less. Right. Right. <laughs> That's the way technology works, though. Yeah, you know. Can't blame uh, them for wanting well, to buy it. What you do is you DR. try and buy it closer to the time they come out. Well, I so also you then read at least articles. have a year before you, and then you don't get buyer's remorse. Well, I waited a year before I bought the one I got. You know, I just wanted to, and everybody said it was so good, including you. No, I said the one I have is good. Yeah. That What's one, the they say. That one, Phil's that passport. one, they say. The difference is a t- is two thousand dollars in price. Okay, if if you just buy the bottom line, uh, two thousand dollars in price, and uh, they say the difference in the two thousand dollars is not worth it, comparing one machine to the other and what they're capable of doing. I just got more memory. That's all I did. So, I have a lot of memory in mine. Yeah, you know. But uh, I'm happy with it. It's a, it's a great machine. Yeah, well, you know, it's last year's machine. You could have gotten one that was 50% faster. And way technology or, or, pa- or paid $500. I just bought or, a car. Or, or paid $500 less, and now you bought a $10,000 automobile that I'm sure you're not going to drive anywhere. You know what the top speed of that thing is? 43 miles an hour. <laughs> uh, Phil. And, and that's going and, downhill. Yeah, and you're <laughs> lucky. <laughs> Kevin, you're into cars. What do you think? Uh, I wouldn't pay more than five grand for it. Yeah, I, I, I sort of agree. But... The guy paid ten oh, grand oh, just oh, for the paint minute, job. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait yeah, a but minute. you don't pay what they put into it because it's way overdone. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah because no matter how, whatever he put into it, it doesn't raise the worth of the car. Am I right? Is it going to say yeah. Phil's? You, uh, uh, you can like, you, I, you can look them up. Let, let, let we let Kevin answer here, please. Yeah. Yeah, Kevin. What I put into my truck, I will never ever get back. Yeah, I know that already. So uh, we don't care what the paint job is. That thing's worth five thousand dollars, according to these people it's, who, it's who know 20. those cars. What? It's worth twenty. Uh, Brian in- just said it's worth five. Kevin just <laughs> said it was worth five, and these people know more about cars than you do because well, they yeah, wouldn't I have paid ten. On, they wouldn't have paid ten thousand dollars for that car. I looked it up on Haggerty's uh, price uh, thing, which monitors sales of all of these cars, 
And but, in its condition, uh, it's actually, uh, it's concourse condition. It, this would be uh, a $27,000 right. car. A not, any car is worth something, somebody will pay for it. That's, that's right. right. Not and only I, that, but he had it, he had it delivered. Yeah. You know, I'm it. looking at that right rear fender and it looks a little crooked to me. I, 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 I straightened it. <laughs> Phil sat on that when you were taking pictures. No, no, there's an adjustment <laughs> on the fender. Oh, by and, the way, for the last couple of days, I've been going through Shecky's hard drives, external yeah. hard drives. Oh, yeah. I believe that I'm now in possession of a total of something like 20,000 motion pictures and TV shows. Wow. Oh, my God. Oh, you got them? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he collected everything. 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 Uh, now you can be an archivist for the late show. <clears throat> no, the, the late shows aren't on there. Oh, no, but you, not the late shows, but you could make get the movie clips that he used to. No, maybe... well, the, those, uh, I, I have no idea. I, believe me, I forget what the name of that film is. All That stuff was all taken from one film. It's called, like, uh, those crazy animals or something yeah. like that. Yeah. I so think you were bitching about right theaters. Thing. Now you go down and buy a theater and open yourself a nice theater. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, it, it's just amazing what he uh, collected. Uh, and I still have three more drives they got to get to me that uh, this gal Kathy over at the who's at the Letterman show has right now that uh, Randy is going to get to me. Uh, Did they give you all his drives? <laughs> all his drives and his computer. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You could start your own streaming channel on the cable TV. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, a lot of Did, these movies are in you... copyright. Yeah. What? Did you figure out how to get the password then? No, you figured out no, no, be, no, because these oh. are, are standalone hard drives. They're external hard drives. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't okay. even tried to attempt that yet. What I might do is just pull the hard drive in that machine and then put it, uh, uh, hook it up externally and see what's on yeah. that drive. And if it's nothing important, you know. There's uh, software that will allow you to take over the machine the FBI uses it for child porn cases and things like that, but they they have ways of opening up the machine using a, a different operating system that's separate. Yeah, well, I've somebody I've, talked I, about that already. Yeah, well, I, I I I'm I, I'm not ready for that yet. I'm not going to go into that whole thing, but there are ways I'm sure of getting in there. He I knew the password because he gave it to me one day. And and it, then I, I forgot the password. I mean, <laughs> it, it, Windows it machine, Alex. I just needed it for the moment to work on his machine for him. Is this a Windows machine, Alex? Yeah. I think they're easier to break into than, yes, than Apple's yes. are. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, there's got to be a way of doing it. I just haven't had time to figure it out yet. Mm. But I have gotten what all the usual suspects of passwords. Be. You know, I have the usual suspects. Well, his, his, no, his was, I think, a series of six numbers, if I remember correctly. Bill's is easy. I spend too much on things I don't need. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, I, uh, Don Giller said, uh, try, uh, try Arliss, because George Arliss was uh, Shecky's favorite actor. But no, ah. it's not, not Arliss. It's not Arliss. Anyway, hey, listen, good talking to all of you. Uh, Jeff, nice of you to be here. Uh, uh, and and, and uh, Brian, we can barely see you, but as you pass by a like post or something, we do. Uh, um, uh, Kevin, thank you very much for having joined us, as well as Josh, who uh, is a delight uh, and has all the information we need. And uh, Phil can't go up against him because he knows what he's saying. Uh, let's uh, let's also thank Alan. Let's thank uh, Vernon Nunn. Thank you, Vernon. Well, uh, it, at least I, I didn't read the book, but I, I heard it on tape. And Phil, ladies and gentlemen, Phil Meyer and his uh, jalopy. That's the best way we can describe oh, it. A hundred years old. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, that's uh, about uh, twelve years younger than I, older than I am. Yeah. Anyway, everybody, uh, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye as well as we say goodbye to our uh, citizen panel for tonight. That's it for tonight. Uh, uh, next will be uh, Jack Bishop with The Intersection, and he'll be here taking your calls on Skype at Gabnet Live. That's the thing you're supposed to call. In the meantime, I'll see you on Monday. We're going to do the pop-up show at 4 o'clock. And then we'll be back again here 
on Wednesday at uh, 10.30 Eastern Time. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.